Welcome. My name is Brandon. Please join me and my friends John and Kate on this tour of the Belvedere Cinema Gallery in Waukegan, Illinois. This is where I spend most of my time and energy these days. This video will be in two parts. Part one will be a trip around the cinema, and part two will be John's gallery and collection of artifacts from abandoned and demolished malls. You may know John as the creator of John Rev Projects. In case you don't, he has a fantastic blog and collection of photographs. He was photographing the dilapidated Dixie Square Mall long before I even knew dead malls existed. As with the Belvedere Discount Mall video, whenever there's a break in dialogue, I will toss in cinema history. All credit for the cinema's history goes to John. All I did was rewrite his notes in a manner better suited to narration. It's been repainted. Kate found the Pepsi sign. The story of Belvedere Cinema begins in 1966. The single screen, 1,000 seat movie theater had its gala premiere on January 21st. The opening feature was Do Not Disturb starring Doris Day and Rod Taylor. General Cinema Corporation was the owner of the theater. In 1974, General Cinema opened a triplex movie theater adjacent to the Lakehurst Mall located about five minutes west of Belvedere. single screen with a thousand seats. In 1980 they chopped it in half, made a twin out of it, and then in 1991 after the theater originally closed in 1989, they chopped it in half again widthwise to create four screens, so they called it a miniplex. And that's when it became a theater. So these two theaters are the larger auditoriums but we don't use them because they're not in great condition. But we use the theater you were just in for the motion picture screenings, and then the one next to it we use for music. In addition to the movies and concerts that John mentioned, the Belvedere Cinema also hosts film festivals and video premieres for local artists.
Continuing where John left off, the Lakehurst Cinema expanded to eight screens in 1984 and 12 in 1987. However, by the year 2000, the theater closed amid financial problems with General Cinema. On September 28, 2001, the Village Theaters chain reopened Lakehurst 12. The following year, they purchased the Belvedere Cinema. Village Theaters had plans to spend $100,000 on renovations. All they did was change the seating. Evidence suggests the new seats were haphazardly reinstalled. Village Theaters decided to focus their efforts on Lakehurst and closed Belvedere at the end of 2003. The last known showtimes published were for Thanksgiving weekend, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Jeepers Creepers 2, and The Fighting Temptations. From 2004 to 2019, the cinema sat vacant. Lakehurst Mall was demolished in 2004, its theater in 2007. On April 6, 2019, the Belvedere Cinema opened to the public for the first time since 2003. It reopened first as a photography exhibit and open house as part of the first art event in the mall. The COVID pandemic hit in early 2020, but on November 14th, Belvedere showed its first movie since 2003 with a screening of Night of the Living Dead. A year later, Belvedere Cinema reopened as the Belvedere Cinema Gallery. To this day, the theater still shows movies two to three times a month. The mall owners pay for movie licensing fees. So if you look along the edge here, these are remnants of the original shadow box screen that was common at General Cinema Theaters at the time. Originally they were painted white and people complained about them being um, reflective of the movie. So they started painting them black and most modern theaters got rid of them. But you can see the slant kind of where it curves in a little bit and then the screen would have dropped right here. I wanted to share what has allowed the Belvedere Cinema to survive today. The theater is completely DIY. Everyone who works at the cinema is a volunteer. Local artists help run the venue by running concessions, cleaning up after shows, and other helpful tasks. In exchange for their help, those artists can display their art in front of the theater and hang out and talk to people between shows. There are two additional people I wanted to call out. Austin of Waukegan's Downtown Art Park is the cinema's direct line with Belvedere Mall Management. He helps coordinate events with the mall and was responsible for first getting John and his friends into the theater space. Gerardo of Ravine Atelier is the cinema's quote-unquote sound janitor who handles all booking, lights, and sound for the cinema's music events. Doors unlocked. That was the original ticket booth. I'm not sure when they sealed it off, but I know they moved the ticket machine over here. As of the release of this video, all shows have been free admission. Any money that comes from concession sales and donations goes back into restocking concessions and improving the cinema facilities and experience.
So we've been in talk with a guy who was involved in the restoration of the Genesee Theater, and they reproduced some of the period correct carpet for that theater. So they can, if we give them a sample, they can, in theory, reproduce this for our theater. I was a projectionist for a couple of summers. Yeah. So this is just bringing back memories of 2002. That's about when this theater closed, okay. 2003. I remember like, oh no, that, <laughs> that, it's gonna break. I gotta pause the movie and re and fix it quickly. I remember it was too fast, too furious. I'm like, ah! <laughs> At the Capitol, we have kind of a vision of actually combining those two screens into one large auditorium. And we can have you know mid-sized acts and larger movie screening. Yeah, and they kind of just grafted this projection booth onto the existing structure. Mm -hmm. The room we're pulling up on the left was the original popcorn room. Oh. So all the general cinema theaters made their popcorn on site, but they did not do it down at the booth, or at the uh, concession stand, because it would be too much people getting in the way. So they would pop it all up here and stuff it all into these big yellow trash bags, basically. I've got one hanging downstairs, I'll show you. And then they would stow it here for up to a week or a month or however long. In later years, they moved it down there after General Cinema. So we had ideas for turning this space into a dark room for photography. So this room is for, you know, it's carpeted and it has a shower for some reason. Maybe uh, worked overnight. <laughs> or chemicals? I don't know. Maybe. That's a good question. I guess if you're working late nights, Rocky Horror screenings or something. Oh. Maybe stay the night here. Yeah. I can sleep in here. Almost. Nah, I'll make it a little creep down. It's quiet enough. It's insulting. I know how to, you know, put film in them and take it out, and that's about it. That was my. <laughs> well, there's some electrical things that we still gotta look into, so we're kind of afraid to touch that. Yeah, I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. 
but back in the day, this was where they would store all the films. Fire proof room. Some of the uh, film cans that were left behind. I'm familiar with these. They always had fake names, like when Star Wars came in, it was labeled something, but it wasn't Star Wars Episode One. This one still got the permit for uh, When a Stranger Calls. So we've got a few of these reels scattered throughout the theater. I think that's one of them, actually. But we've used a couple of them for photographs and stuff. One of my worst memories was having to splice four copies of Charlie Angels 2. I thought, who's gonna watch this stupid movie? I think we had one copy of 28 Days Later, is that yeah. what it was called? And that's the one we all wanted to watch, so like, why do we have one of these and four of the junk movie? And back in the day, in these cabinets here, this used to be a phone booth. You figure when the theater had a thousand seats, you got a full loud, noisy auditorium. You need to make a phone call, you can close yourself in there. So now it's used as a janitor closet, but. Mm -hmm. So the phone, I mean, part of it. And then in these two cabinets here used to be a candy vending machine and a cigarette vending machine. Mm -hmm. And then water fountains, obviously. The bathrooms haven't been changed since the 60s, I don't think. It's like staring at, at one of those magic eye puzzles where you just stare at the wall long enough and you can see a symbol or something. The women's restroom is kind of neat because of uh, some uh, amenities from General Cinema in here. Here, here. There used to be stools for the women to sit down and do their makeup. The stalls still have the purse holders, which I've never seen anywhere else. Health scared me. <laughs> Have you seen these toilets? They're ginormous! <laughs> the directory here was found at J.C. Penney at Northridge. Someone conveniently just ripped it out of the wall and dropped it on the ground, so we were able to pick up most of the letters from that and piece it back together. And it helped that it was at a east-facing store entrance, so the sun burned in some of the letters, so that helped us put it back together. These plans were found upstairs. And then those are some of the newspaper ads from the mall, from the cinema's opening in 1966. I love the old illustrations, like an old cartoon. And it's all hand-drawn. I know someone who has the actual printed grand opening ad. He won't respond to any of my emails. <laughs> I've been trying to get a hold of him to at least make a scan of it. Um, this is kind of some concept art for a repaint we want to do. Uh, we have a lead on a new cinema sign, because that's modeled after the original one that used to be on the theater, which they took off when it closed. So we'd like to actually get that back up there. Lakehurst Mall, this is kind of what started this all for me. Documenting the demolition of this mall back in 2004 was my first photography project. Hmm. Little corner devoted to Northridge. This is what I currently have for dead malls. I got kicked out of that one. Sandberg Mall in, Gales, in Galesburg, Illinois. 
I was in there for six hours and then I start hearing voices and suddenly here's two or three cops and a very angry property owner. Somehow I did not get arrested that day. <laughs> all my night work. Most of these, I think all of these were shot on film. I haven't done any night shooting in a minute. These artifacts back here uh, all came from the Genesee Theater in downtown Waukegan when they were restoring it in the late 90s, early 2000s. They were being stored at the Carnegie Library building downtown until they started renovating that building. The reason they wound up there in the first place is because these artifacts were being stored in the basement of the theater after the renovation when a U-Line took over the building. They threw it all out. So my friend down at City Hall, uh, Dave Motley, a dumpster dove all this stuff and was able to save it and they stored it at the Carnegie building for a few years. So I was told that is part of the balcony. This is one of the molds used to replicate the original plaster in the theater. But that was, a, I believe, a sound device, an original lamp housing, and one of the chandelier chains. So this was found upstairs. They put it out when the theater closed in 2003 and the operators at the time also owned the Lakehurst Cinema down the street. But the cool thing about this is if you look carefully, at some point in 1974, they put this upstairs and just let it sit for decades because you can see the letters that are burned into it behind the big white ones. General Cinema Corporation, now showing Belvedere Cinema. Um, Young Frankenstein and Coming, and I'm not sure what's all down here. But you can see it's kind of burned into there. This camera here, uh, this was found at Northridge. This was the camera that they used for all of the Santa portraits. Uh, designed specifically for portrait taking. As far as I know, it was in service by about 1981. And they used it probably up until the mall's closing. You know, I want to. Is that uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then the cool thing about this camera is it doesn't have a countdown for how many pictures you got left, which is kind of annoying. Um, but it's got an odometer for how many pictures it's taken through its entire life. So right now it's got to count 24,347 pictures. And that ends our tour of the Belvedere Cinema Gallery. I wish I could share more places like this, but for now it's back to Minnesota. I hope you have a great day. Take care. <laughs>